Good evening, friends. For this video, I kind of just wanted it to be more of a cozy fireside chat about books that feel like autumn, specifically my favorite books to read during this season. Autumn is my favorite season for reading. It is so cozy and the books are full of so much magic and whimsy. So let's get started. So this first one isn't one, <laughs> it is a book series. It is pure magic. It's, it's a very hyped series, but it is a series that deserves it. And that is the Practical Magic series. As you can see, there are multiple books in the series, but they all take place at a different time with different characters, but they're all related to each other. You can choose to read the books in chronological order or in the order they were written. I know Alice Hoffman herself, the author, has said there's not one right way to do it. Either way is totally fine. In no particular order, we have Practical Magic. This is my beautiful signed edition from Easton Press. And then we have The Rules of Magic. And I love how all of these covers all have a color theme of gold and black. And then we have Magic Lessons, which is my personal favorite book in the series. And then we have the most recent book, and that is The Book of Magic. All of these, of course, by Alice Hoffman. If you've never read the books, you may have seen the film Practical Magic starring Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. I know it's very nostalgic for a lot of people. In short, the Owens women have been blamed for over 200 years for pretty much everything that has gone wrong in their small Massachusetts town. In Practical Magic, we follow Jillian and Sally, who have kind of been bullied and whispered, like people have whispered behind their backs and pointed at them all throughout their lives. So they have tried to distance themselves from their witchcraft and their heritage. Really, all they want to do is escape and go somewhere new where nobody knows who they are. But despite trying to leave and start their own lives elsewhere, of course, magic will always bring them back together. It's one of my favorite stories. I'm not doing it justice. If you want to start with any of the books, I would recommend starting with Magic Lessons. This is the prequel to Practical Magic. It's set, I believe, in the 1600s. It's, so it's historical, it's magical, it is a story of love and loss and the courage that these women had. Oh my gosh, these are just so good. Okay, and next I have the Nancy Drew books. There was a time when I wanted to dress like Nancy Drew. I wanted to solve mysteries like she did. I wanted to behave and talk and act like she did. If you're into like the vintage side of autumn, you know, old detective stories and reading by flashlight under the covers, that's how these books make me feel. Nancy starts to feel like a friend. She's so down to earth. Like she's out there solving these mysteries, but at the same time, she's got her driver's license and she hangs out with her friends and she makes dinner and she helps out her neighbors. So every autumn I like to pick up a couple of these and maybe I'll even do a weekend where I just read as many Nancy Drew books as I can and I just have such a good time. They're so short, you can fly through them. They're just really fun and nostalgic. If you're not into witches or ghosts or anything like that, you can't go wrong with Nancy Drew. This next one, I do not have a physical copy of. I listened to it on Audible on my phone. But before we continue on, I wanted to let you know about the sponsor of today's video, which is Casetify. So sponsor Desi, take it away. I am working with Casetify on this video. Big thank you to them for supporting my channel and partnering with me. I am obsessed with their phone cases before they even reached out. I've been getting their cases for years. I've always been one of those people that will go for the cute phone case over the more practical phone case that will actually keep my phone safe. But that's what I love about Casetify is that they are so cute but also the absolute best at keeping my phone safe. So Casetify is a tech accessory brand specializing in unique and protective phone cases and AirPod cases, watch bands, and lots of other tech accessories. Their Qi Tech 2.0 technology is drop test approved for drops up to 9.8 feet. The cases also feature a camera ring and a raised front bezel for all angle protection. Casetify's new impact and ultra impact cases are made of 65% recycled and plant-based materials. They also come in so many designs. You can pick your favorite color or print and match the phone case to your style or to fit your mood or the season. You can also add your name or a monogram for a truly customized case. Casetify's cases are 100% non-toxic and non-hazardous. And I also love that they feature an 
an antimicrobial coating that keeps your case germ-free, killing 99% of bacteria. So Caseify was kind enough to send me four cases. The first one is what I have on my phone right now. It is this green watercolor floral berries. I think the foliage is so, so pretty and detailed. And I love this olive green color for this time of year. And then next I have this bookshelf garden impact case. I think this might be the one that I switched to for this autumn. I can't decide between this and the watercolor floral berries. And then I have this beautiful wildflowers impact case. I love that it looks like it belongs in a museum. And lastly, I have this white butterfly impact case. I love that the white of my phone just looks like so flawless with this case. It is so classic and beautiful. So if you are looking for an amazing new phone case for the season, you can go to casetify.com slash darlingdesi for 15% off your order. Okay, so like I said before, I don't have a physical copy of this one, so I'm going to put it up here because I love the narrator for these audiobooks. It is the Spellbound Paranormal Mystery Series by, oh my goodness, who's it by? Annabelle Chase, I believe. This is like Halloween Town in the form of a cozy mystery. It's about a girl who is driving along the road and sees a man on the side. She thinks that maybe he's thinking some not so good thoughts about you know, maybe, he, maybe he's having a hard time. She goes to try and help him. She comes to find that he is actually a ghost and he takes her into Spellbound, which is this town that is full of ghouls, werewolves, vampires, witches, warlocks. It really feels like Halloween Town. If you've seen that movie, then you'll know what I'm talking about. In the real world, she is a lawyer. So she ends up deciding to stay there and help solve crimes. And they're the most insane, fun crimes because they're committed by these werewolves and vampires. And it's just truly one of my favorite cozy mystery series. Okay, this next one is one of my absolute new favorite books. Okay, I've read a lot of autumnal themed graphic novels, but this one absolutely takes the cake for me. It has the most quaint, cozy autumn vibes think over the garden wall and that is garlic and the vampire by brie paulson imagine the cutest little town in the woods where it's full of vegetables and a witch and they spend their days gardening and selling their fresh produce at this little market it is pure autumnal joy story goes all of these vegetables are out enjoying their time in their gardens and they notice this big castle up on the mountain they see smoke coming out of it and they think huh that's weird it's been abandoned for years i wonder if somebody's hiding out there and then someone says wait didn't a vampire used to live there? And they all get scared and they decide that garlic should be the one to go investigate because vampires don't do well with garlic. But garlic is so scared. She's not a fan of adventures. She just wants to live a peaceful, quiet life. She kind of reminds me of Bilbo Baggins. But she decides to be brave and go investigate and figure out if there really is a vampire living in this castle. And it is so wholesome. And the illustrations are just stunning. It really feels like over the garden wall. It it reminds me so much of that show. So if you are a fan of Over the Garden Wall, I highly recommend. Next, I have another very cozy book, and that is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. If you like coffee and cafes, feeling happy, a D&D style cozy slice of life fantasy that also kind of feels a little bit like Animal Crossing, then I think you would really like this one. This is a new favorite for me as well. It's about an orc who decides to leave her fighting days behind. She just wants to settle in this quaint little town and start a coffee shop. The thing is, where she has settled, nobody has heard of coffee before. She discovered it on the road and she wants to bring it to the people in this little town. She builds her cafe up from the ground and you interact with all of these really lovable, adorable characters, some not so lovable. At first, when I saw the cover, I was like, that doesn't look like something I would usually pick up. This is one of those times when you maybe don't wanna judge a book by its cover. Unless you like it, then please judge it by its cover and pick it up. It's so cozy and warm and so wholesome and oh, I love it. Okay, now this one is my favorite autumn book of all time and I only discovered it last year. And that is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I'm really bad at describing this one because I'm. it just leaves me speechless even just thinking about it. Um, 
This really is the adult Twilight. So if you read Twilight as a teenager and you really liked it, this is that, but 10 times better. It's like Twilight on steroids. If you wanna read a book that's gonna make you feel that is set partially at Oxford in the fall, it has those beautiful English like descriptions of nature and just the campus, the university campus at Oxford. And it's about a witch and a vampire who both have a common interest in this magical book that the witch, Diana, accidentally pulled up in the library one day. And the vampire, Matthew, wants this book to know where his lineage, where vampires came from. And Diana wants it because everybody else wants it. So she wants to keep it from getting into the wrong hands. And they kind of team up. And of course there's romance. Oh my gosh, it is so good. If you want a book to dive into this autumn, that will just take over your life and you will never want to put down and that like if you kind of like the university campus like oxford during autumn kind of like dark academia vibes but with witches and vampires this is that book oh it's so good if you've read it i would love to hear from you in the comments because i just i can't talk about this one enough and i love hearing from other fans of the series yeah i love it and then next, this list would not be complete without my favorite author to read during autumn, and that is Ray Bradbury. I specifically love The October Country. I also love From the Dust Returned. That one kind of gives me Adam's Family vibes, so if you are looking for a book that feels like Adam's Family, I would recommend From the Dust Returned. But The October Country is a collection of short stories. The Emissary is one of my favorites. And the reason I like these is because say it's a crisp autumn morning and you wanna just sit down for 15 to 20 minutes and read a story that the prose like come to life and make you feel the crispness of the air. You can smell the pumpkins and the apples and the hay rides. And if you know Ray Bradbury, you know that his writing is so lyrical and so descriptive. And that is why he's my favorite author to read during this time of year. I have read these stories time and time again and I never get tired of reading them. Next, this is a book that I'm actually currently reading, so I didn't know if I should include it or not, but I'm really enjoying it, so I wanna share it with you guys. And that is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. I really hope I said that right. If I didn't, please let me know. This book was described to me as practical magic meets house in the cerulean sea, and so far I can confirm that is exactly how this book feels. It takes place in England, and it's about a witch named Mina. As an orphan, she was abandoned by her parents. She was raised by strangers. She's very used to, you know, being good and following the rules, doing what she's supposed to do, except for the fact that she has a secret online account where she posts videos pretending to be a witch. Even though she is a witch, she thinks it's fine because nobody's gonna actually believe that she is one. But then one day, someone does believe her and a secret message arrives at her doorstep. It invites her to travel to the mysterious nowhere house. There, she will teach three young witches how to control their magic. Mina decides to go and from there an adventure begins. She gets tangled up in the lives of these young witches and there may or may not be some romance with Jane who is this very attractive librarian. If you're someone who likes to focus on reading really cozy, wholesome books during fall, I think you would really like this one. But again, I haven't finished it yet, so I can't speak on it as a whole, but really, really enjoying it so far. I've got another graphic novel for you. This one I have featured on my channel before, but I think it's been a year or so. And that is Fangs by Sarah Anderson. This is a book that when I read it, it just, it made me feel like everything was right in the world. It's the cutest book about a 300 year old vampire who falls in love with a werewolf. It made me feel so warm and fuzzy on the inside. And I love that it feels like a classic book, like those fancy cloth bound editions. It's, it's so pretty. I just love to look at it. Like, come on, oh my goodness. It's been a few years since I read this one, but I remember when I read it, I was in such a reading slump afterwards. I couldn't read anything else. I, I even started rereading it literally right after finishing. It, it was that good. I plan on rereading it this year. One of my favorite classic novels is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And this book is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. This is a retelling of Frankenstein from Elizabeth's perspective. Elizabeth was a Frankenstein, well, not Frankenstein. Well, it is Frankenstein, but sometimes if you say Frankenstein, people think you're talking about the monster, but it's Victor Frankenstein, the creator of the monster. It's about his 
his wife, but it starts with them as kids. And it's so interesting to see Victor. You, you kind of see these tells from him as a child that he was a bit strange. Um, and you kind of see where this desire to create life from nothing, to recreate a being comes from. The ending had me crying and really confused, but then like, whoa, what? And that's, I think, why I wanted to restart it again. This was a book that I just could not put down. It's written in a way that made me feel like I was hanging out with Elizabeth throughout the day. I would listen to the audiobook and I felt like me and Elizabeth had become friends. Kirsten White did a really good job of writing her and making her so real and fleshed out. I felt like I got to know her so well. You know, when you read Frankenstein, you only get his perspective. So it's really cool to get a different lens on the whole story. I think that it was really respectful of the original source material, but it also went off in its own direction and I loved it. Another one that I always gravitate towards during autumn is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I specifically recommend The Hound of the Baskervilles. This is one of my personal favorites, but honestly, any of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes books, any of the stories are just so good. And then if you wanna go one step further, you could even watch the show Sherlock starring Benedict Cumberbatch, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. Again, really good for those of you who are interested in vintage autumn vibes. Like, I mean, look at his detective hat, his whole outfit, the colors, and, and it's not too long, so you can get through it pretty quickly. I realized that I've been recommending a lot of series, um, so we're just gonna continue on with that. So this is one of the books in the Flavia de Luce series. Flavia is an 11-year-old mini Sherlock Holmes with a fascination for chemistry and kind of like the darker, more macabre side of life. For example, one of her hobbies includes creating different poisons. The story is set in rural 1950s England. It reads a bit slowly, but it does feel like a proper cozy English mystery. Also, the narration style that Flavia has in the book reminds me a little bit of Enola Holmes. The opening of this book, I love it. It says, if you're anything like me, you adore rot. It is pleasant to reflect upon the fact that decay and decomposition are what make the world go round. When an ancient oak falls somewhere in the forest, it begins almost at once to be consumed by invisible predators. She's, she's one of a kind and I love, love hanging out with her whenever I read these books. If you've been following me, for more than a year or so, you're gonna know what this book is. Dracul by Dacker Stoker and J.D. Barker. This is the book that convinced me that vampires are real. Seriously though, this book is phenomenal. So this is written by Dacker Stoker, who is I think the great great grandson of Bram Stoker who wrote Dracula. This book is about Bram Stoker and his experiences that led him to write Dracula, his experience with vampires and why he wrote about them the way he did. My favorite part about this book though, if you do read it, you've got to read the author's note. It has these notes that were originally from Bram Stoker's desk um, that the Stoker Foundation owns. He says, when Bram Stoker first brought his manuscript to his publisher in the United Kingdom, Archibald Constable and Company, he opened the conversation with one simple line. This story is true. So he talks about how Bram Stoker really believed what he wrote and you know, was he crazy or was he not? Like I've told Jared, if I could go back to school, I would want to study folklore and vampires because I'm so interested in the history of vampires. If you're also into vampires and folklore and stuff like that, you might really like this book as well. This book is one that when I look back on, I don't remember a lot of the story. But it's been a year or so and I still remember exactly how it made me feel, how in the world I was, that when I put the book down, it took me a little bit to come back to reality. After I finished it, I just, I, I didn't move on for a little, from a little while. I just wanted to stay in this world and with these characters. And that is The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. Now, if you've read Kate Morton before, you know her writing style is a bit slower. This is pretty thick book, over 550 pages. And it's definitely, like I said, more on the slow side, but it's perfect to dive into on a cold rainy afternoon. This is a contemporary literary gothic mystery. It is a haunting story about the original origins of this classic kids book 
in the story called The Mystery of the Mud Man. There are dual timelines and POVs. There's a decaying castle where you can hear things in the walls. It's the kind of book you want to take your time with. I don't want to say too much because I feel like it's one that is really good to go in blind. But if you like long lost letters and searching for truth behind family history and love and mystery, but also like a little bit spooky, I think you would really like this. And last but definitely not least, this is another one of my absolute favorites that I have reread so many times, and that is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I really like to think of this book as like a Disney Channel original movie, but I mean that in the best way possible. It is a children's book, so it has a happy ending. Kind of, kind of. It is so wholesome. It's about a boy named Nobody who is raised in a graveyard by ghosts. I'm just gonna read you the inside of this one because Neil Gaiman is such an amazing writer. He can describe it so much better than I can. Um, it says, it takes a graveyard to raise a child. Nobody Owens, known as Bod, is a normal boy. He would be completely normal if he didn't live in a graveyard being raised by ghosts with a guardian who belongs to neither the world of the living nor the dead. There are adventures in the graveyard for a boy. An ancient indigo man, a gateway to the abandoned city of ghouls, the strange and terrible Sleer. But if Bod leaves the graveyard, he will be in danger from the man Jack, who has already killed Bod's family. It also says in here, the graveyard book is a modern classic. I completely agree. I think it's gonna be a book that never really ages and that people are going to continue to read. Like I said, it feels like a Disney Channel original movie to me in the sense that it's exciting and adventurous. The characters are so fun. You get to know these ghosts who are raising this young boy in a graveyard and it's just really, really fun and so like so perfect for an October morning. <sighs> okay, those are all of the books I do have so many more I could include, but I didn't want this video to be too long. I hope that you've enjoyed our little evening chatting. I have the fireplace going. I tried to edit it out a little bit less so that it sounds like we're just talking and I wasn't cutting out every um and little breath that I take um, because you guys are my friends and I would love to hear what books you are currently reading or what your go-to books are during fall. There are so many more that I want to read still. Like I've still never read The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, I think. I've had it for years and I've had it on my TBR for years. It's just a bit big and intimidating. So I haven't started that one yet. I also have maybe an unpopular opinion. I read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern and it did feel very autumnal, but it's not one of my favorite autumn books, which is why I've never recommended it as a book to read during autumn because it's just not personally one of my favorites. But you guys recommend it all the time. So I know there's a huge audience of people who love that book. It has been a hard year for me. And I just, I feel like September and October is gonna be such a time of relief and rejuvenation to my soul. Autumn already feels like that all the time, but this year I feel like it's gonna be even more special and even more magical and meaningful. Anyway, I have so enjoyed this chat. I hope you have a lovely evening or morning, wherever you are or whatever time you might be watching this. I wish you all of the magic in the world. And yeah, I love you and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye friends.